In this video, I'm going to show you some of the tricks I use to find hidden bases in 7 Days to Die PvP. The first thing we need to learn here is that there's only a few different kinds of blocks that players could actually use to cover things that they're hiding. The most common one here is topsoil. And you can see I'm placing topsoil just on top of the regular terrain. I'm also going to be replacing the existing terrain with topsoil and flattening it down as well. The reason people use topsoil is because it mimics the, the pattern of the terrain that it's placed on. Here in the desert, when you place it down, it becomes desert pattern terrain. But the thing with topsoil is that when you look at it on the map, you can see that it's not the same color as the desert. It's actually a dark green color. If we were to make a base using topsoil as the cover, it sticks out kind of like a sword thumb. In desert, anyway. Even though when you walk by it, it doesn't look like there's anything there. It'll stick out on the map. When you zoom in all the way on the map, you don't see perfect pixel color. It kind of blends in with the surroundings, so it can be difficult to tell, but if you know what to look for, you can easily spot the, the dark green color. So here I'm placing some other materials that players can use to cover things. We've got destroyed stone, regular stone, gravel, and dirt. And you can see that only the topsoil actually mimics the desert terrain when you're walking past it. So these things would be noticed pretty easily if you're just walking by. You can see on the map that these all produce different colors. Destroyed stone produces kind of a yellowish color, regular stone a dark gray, gravel is kind of a light gray, and dirt and topsoil have the same dark green color. You can also see that the frames that I put down are kind of a brownish color. Gravel has 200 durability. So does dirt. Regular stone is 500, just like regular stone. Destroyed stone is 200. And topsoil is also 200. You can use this to distinguish between natural soil, because natural soil is never 200. It's 120 for desert sand. 250 for regular topsoil in the forest, 50 for snow. Now I'm going to show you what this same topsoil looks like in the forest. You can see that it matches the pattern perfectly, um, but it's not going to match the, the durability or look the same on the map. Here it is on the map. You can tell that dark green color same dark green color you saw in the desert. Um, it looks a little bit nicer compared to the lighter green of the regular forest, but it's still detectable. Okay, how about the snow biome? Well, topsoil here does look like snow. There's a little big base here covered in topsoil. Looks pretty good looks almost identical really, but when you look at the map, again, you see the same dark green pattern, and it's very noticeable. When I see this, I'll mark it on the map, and then I'll go and find it using the compass. Once I've identified where it is roughly in the compass, I'll then start punching the ground to check for durability. Now that i found the 200, I know that's topsoil, and that's where I'll dig. So what about the wasteland? A lot of people like to use the wasteland because you can place destroyed stone, and it's the same exact destroyed stone that is used on the topsoil here. But there is one major difference. Let's see if you can figure it out. You notice it doesn't appear on the map at all. That's the difference right there. The pattern isn't the same. In regular wasteland, the pattern contains kind of a grassy hint to it. When destroyed stone has been placed, or the, the naturally occurring destroyed stone has been damaged, the grassy hint goes away. It just turns into this brick pattern that you see. So if you see a large area that's just bricks, you know that it's been damaged and replaced. So those are all just examples, but what does this look like in a real game? Well, here are the highlights from my base finding expeditions on this seed. I've added some sound effects so it's more obvious to you when I think I found a clue. Normally what I do when I walk around anywhere is I just keep a land claim out. And the reason is that 
you can see whether or not you can place a land claim pretty obviously as you're holding it. Once you get into the dead zone of a land claim, like I am now, it turns red. So that's an indication to me that I need to be looking for a land claim somewhere in this area. The next step is that I pull out a wood frame. The wood frame will turn red when I'm actually in the land claim. Now that I'm in the claim, I'm looking for the entrance. I'm looking for a place topsoil or anything that looks out of order. And you can see that this base has already been found. There are other indications that a base might be nearby. One is the presence of a mine. You can see as soon as I walked up on this one, I found the land claim as well, but Usually a large mine like this, or zombie damage, indicates that there is a lot of foraging activity going on nearby. And in this case, I can see some topsoil right away. I waited for my buddies to show up before I investigated further. Well, that was easy. They're never gonna believe that. They're gonna say you're cheap. Line claim over here. Looks like a claimed POI. Maybe. This one looks promising. Oh yeah, I haven't been there. Let's create that for. It's just like a, it's like a little plateau, and there's a land claim underneath it. I can't see the entrance yet. But I'm wondering why this section of the thing was cut. On the entrance. Uh, um, it's a federal out here. Is it active? I can't tell. And it's, dude, something here doesn't look right. Can you tell what it is? I mean, that's kind of where I think the entrance is, is along that pond ridge right there. No, it, it's lit up, man. There's a fucking torch right underneath here. Oh shit! Really? Look at the screenshot. It's all the side of the hill. Oh. It's all lit up. <laughs> Well, there is a bunch of zombie digs over here, though.
I'm using a technique here to find the corner of the land claim. And then from the corner, I'm counting out to the center. On the server, land claims are 51 by 51. So the center is 26 in. For some reason, people really like to build under bodies of water. I'm not really sure why, because water damage is very hard to repair. And it's also very easy to notice. All you have to do is go slightly under the surface. You can see that the surface of the water has been disturbed.
another great way to find hidden bases, and maybe the most fun way, is to just follow people home. I didn't manage to run fast enough to catch this person going home, but at least I knew where they were. And for a little bit of searching, this is what I found. something. Oh shit, someone's here. Fuck. It's a big ass tree farm over there. Hey, would you believe that all these trees are land claimed? <laughs> I almost didn't find it. <laughs> oh, dude, it's fucking. Not only is it land claimed, but the uh, the door is locked. It's a vault door. Another base. I think maybe there's like. We're at the very edge of the map. Oh, oh dude, there's right. a big square. There is a big square. How about that? <laughs> yeah, it's right here. This is all player place. He's gonna blow it up. Oh shit, fuck I'm radiation. Doesn't really do much. Huh. I guess I'll dig the normal way. Oh, what do we got? Give me the loots. Here's the ladder. Give unto me the good stuff. One thing that I'm not showing here is that it actually takes a long time to find this stuff. 
It's a lot of staring at the map, a lot of poking around, a lot of guessing. Sometimes you can't find the entrance. You can tell that there's place topsoil and they're hiding something, but you can't find where they're actually getting into the base. And in these cases, I just give up after a little while and assume that it's a bedrock. So I find the, the place that's most damaged and I dig from there. Oh, found a base. What? I can hear generators. I'll be on in five seconds. Some it's not bitch. land claims. Uh. Using these techniques, I found pretty much every hidden base on this server. There are ways to get around my techniques, but you'll have to discover those on your own. I hope this video has taught you all something about how to hide your base better. These are just clips from the times that I found the bases, but if you'd like to see the full videos of the raids and all the loot that they had, make sure you subscribe.